What if I told you that I can predict crime before it even happens? My name's Alicia Jones. I'm Haley Alexander. And I'm Rachel Woods. So imagine a situation where you read about an instance in a newspaper where there's been a bank robbery. So the man came in, took all the money, and he left. But is that really the end of the story? Well, not necessarily. There's something called predictive analytics, and it's used by police, police officers. But there's a problem. So pretty much you take, you take raw data from police reports and you're able to analyze them in such a way you can detect hot crime spot, crime hot spots within a town. So you're able to send out, you're able to send out sheriff's deputies, police officers out to hot spot areas in order to deter crime. But there are actually a few problems with this. Data has to be analyzed by a statistician. So it's not efficient because you're having to wait minutes, hours, and sometimes even days to have these records analyzed before they can be put out into a hotspot map. Next, crime information isn't displayed in real time. So once again, you're not being efficient with your time. You're having to wait hours and sometimes even days to have this information available. And lastly, records take too long to be shared with law enforcement. So if you have Tom, who's a repeat offender and likes to cross state lines to commit, uh, commit violent crimes, then these records aren't easily accessible and they aren't easily shareable with other departments, and that's a problem. So the solution is quite simple, and it's known as Crimecast. So what we're proposing is that you start with a police report, which is filed electronically. It's sent to a server and then a database, and then a police officer is able to easily sit from the ease of his desk and pull up an icon on his desktop, is able to analyze the information by himself without having to use a statistician, and he's bypassing the lack of real-time information because it's right there. He can detect these hot spots himself, and then, most importantly, he's able to share these records with other law enforcement officers. So it's ease of use, and it's efficient. Our primary target customer is the Evansville Police Department. And according to the FBI's website, the population in Evansville is approximately 120,414. Now, from this population, we can see that in 2015, the violent crime rates were 347. Now this number only increases over time because in 2016 the violent crime rates increased slightly to 359. Now although this is a small increase, it's still an increase and a problem we need to take care of because these numbers aren't, get, aren't decreasing, they're increasing. So you're probably wondering what predictive analytics are. Well let me give you a scenario. So I'm shopping on Amazon and I'm looking for a new dress for graduation. Amazon will then um, give me a pair of shoes maybe to go with the dress that I'm purchasing, and that's predictive analytics. So what are the cost benefits of predictive analytics? Well, the cost benefits are we will no longer need a statistician, so we will be saving about $80,000. And the crime reduction rates from using predictive analytics are about, are about an average of 25%. So in the beginning stages of Crimecast, we will be exclusively working with the EPD this is just to prove our concept here locally before we go and go ahead and uh, implement it nationwide. So with NEPD, there are 286 uh, sworn in police officers. And as Haley mentioned earlier, there was about 120,000 people that live in Evansville. So that gap's about one police officer for every 420 civilians. So Crimecast's mission goal is to reduce that as much as possible. So next, uh, we'll be working exclusively with the uh, Crime Prevention Unit. That's where the, our, where we're needed the most, where they need much help. And they already have a system in place right now um, that's sort of like ours, but it's kind of out of date, doesn't have any real-time applications. So implementing ours to their system is really going to be seamless because they already know the concept. So our short-term goal is to, like I said, work with EPD and prove our concept. And our long-term goal is to capture around 30% of the market uh, uh, nationwide, which is a, equates to about 270,000 police officers. So what makes this different is that first and foremost, we are we're able to get this information instantaneously in real time, which is something that hasn't been done before. Next, records are going to be easily shared with other police departments. So as I mentioned earlier, you're able to share those even across state lines seamlessly. And then next, we're eliminating the need for a statistician, which is not only cost effective, but it's time efficient. This is the overall business uh, model canvas we use to structure Crimecast. So our first is our value proposition. So Crimecast is a more efficient and cost effective tool that predicts and deters uh, violent crime uh, while enhancing the safety efforts of its citizens and police officers. Uh, next is our key activities. First we need to uh, apply for a provisional patent. 
That patent will uh, protect our uh, intellectual property, which is our algorithms that makes uh, Crimecast go. Secondly, we need to hire a team of consultants along with the board of directors. They will just give us uh, strategic and financial advice moving forward. And lastly, we'll need to uh, do some beta testing. Beta testing is just for you know working out the glitches and uh, making sure it's user friendly for the police officers. Our key resources include police officers, police reports, and the IT platform. Police officers are crucial because they are the ones who are utilizing our platform. And the number of or the police reports are important because we need to collect, analyze, and aggregate this information into our system to be of better use to the police officers. Now, the IT platform goes hand in hand with Katera because they are the ones who will be assisting us with this platform, and without it, we could do nothing. Now, next we have the key metrics, and those include the amount of violent crime, number of police officers, and crime tracking. The amount of violent crime is really important to know because we need to know how much violent crime is going on and we need to know what the violent crime is so that we can aggregate it into our system. And then next, the number of police officers are important because they're the ones collecting all this data to be put into our system. And last of all, crime tracking because we need to be able to pinpoint exactly where the crime is taking place. So for our customer relationships, it's very important that we have police officers from APD sit on our board of directors because we want to know what we're doing right and we also want to know what we can improve on. And next, we're going to offer free trials to potential clients so they'll be able to see the overall value in what we're doing so they can test before they actually commit. And next for our customer channels, we're going to offer pretty much, we're going to rely heavily on word of mouth. And that goes hand in hand with us going to conferences and trainings for law enforcement. And so we'll not only be able to spread the word via our word of mouth, but then police officers will be able to do that as well. And we'll also offer a website as additional resources and then information on how to contact us and what we're doing and how they can reach us to further our services. For our customer segments, it's a trifold. But most importantly, we have to have police officers because they're at the heart of what we do and we wouldn't be able to have this information without them. But most importantly, we'll also have to have Mayor Winnicky and EPD Chief Pew on board. Mayor Winnicky and Chief Pew are essential because they have to be on the same page, on the same board, and they have to be they have to be together in order for this to work. So for our cost structure for year one, it's quite simple. We're estimating cost to be hundred thousand dollars for the IT platform and basic startup fees. We'll need fifteen thousand for the provisional and the overall patent. We'll have to apply for, as Nick mentioned, to protect our intellectual property. And then for year one, we're estimating labor costs to be about $60,000. Revenue ch channels are simple, five-year contracts at $5 million each. And the reason we chose that number is because we will need continuous commitment amongst our customers. And so we'll need to aggregate enough data so that we can detect these hot spots and then we, then we can serve to be a benefit so that we can reduce those crime rates by 25%. But overall, our profits will be approximately $280,000 per year. So in closing, I want you to think back to the scenario that I mentioned earlier about the bank robber. Instead of reading about a situation in the newspaper where the man got away, what if instead we tell a story about how a system called Crimecast was able to use predictive analytics to catch the robber before he could rob the bank? And therein lies the true value of Crimecast. Do you have any questions?